Hey guys, uh, today we're going to show you how to make some e-tubes for your e-bike. And let's see here, get this adjusted so we can see a little better. Alright, so uh, shouldn't take us very long. We have two pipes. Uh, if you make them, if you're doing a 14S series 18650 battery then you're going to want two pipes at 17 and 3 quarter inches long and so we've got two pipes two glue on caps that have a uh, screw on caps to them um, and then we've got two push on caps that go on the ends of the pipes okay and then we've got four little uh, brass bolts make sure they have rounded heads and they are going to go down through these springs right here and I've got four springs the hardware store was out of the size I wanted so I had to get some bigger ones and I got some little brass caps to uh, to make them fit a little better so here we go uh, the washers make sure you get some uh, good washers that will fit down in there nicely now these caps have different size washers that fit them these are a little smaller these are a little bigger and then uh, drill the holes then you drill a hole down the center of the cap uh, very carefully. Don't hurt yourself. Use the, the um, washer as your guide, as you can see down in here, and you drill a hole directly in the center of the cap. Okay. Clear out your, your mess there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll probably clean it up, clean up the hole a little bit. Okay, so now I've got four caps. I'm not going to bore you with drilling all the other holes. I've already done that. Okay, then you'll take a spring and I'll put this and drop it into the cap on top of the washer. Like I said, this one I had to get these little brass um, button tops. This is all stuff I got at the hardware store build a solderless e-tube okay and this one isn't going in real smooth so I think I need to just uh, drill it out just a little bit you want your uh, stuff to move freely and not bind up on you so let's try this again there we go so when you press on it, you get the spring tension out the other side. And you go ahead and put a locking nut on it. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and switch heads on my drill. Lower the speed. I'm going to drill this in just a little bit um, you know what I think I, I've got it flush here with the top now I'm going to take some thread lock and put it on there just a little bit doesn't take much because this first nut that you put on you really don't want it to move ever you want it to stay where you put it so with the thread lock on and the drill, I'm going to go ahead and put this in just a little more. All right. Just about there. And that will give me plenty of room. I still have my spring action. And that will give me room to put the second nut where I can clamp my electrical fittings in between here. That camera it seems like you're not quite getting the full view. All right, okay. So that's one cap, and it will go on here like so. And the next cap, same thing. We'll go ahead and symbol it. And, you know, I, I think this one's a little snug too. I'm going to go ahead and drill the hole to make it a little 
a little looser fit. I don't want to bind up the, the screws in the cap. You want the cap, the screw to be able to move inside the cap a little bit. You don't want it too loose. But you definitely want to have free motion. Okay, so put it in there. Yes, that's much better. Much better. Okay, we're good. Put that on. Next. Same thing. Got a washer, a spring, a bolt. Push it through with your thumb and put a nut on it. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten these up and put a little bit of thread bead lock on it. That will uh, enable us to. So that one's good. See, that one's almost there already. And so is that one. So let's go ahead and put our thread lock on. Sorry if I am boring you with this video. I thought about pausing it in between all of these boring moments, but some people like to see all the boring stuff. So I got a thread lock on there. Again, thread lock, and it's okay if it gets wiped off. So some of it will stay on there. For the most part, enough anyway. It doesn't take much of this stuff. Okay, now we will tighten them up. So that it's about a quarter inch that the threads will be sticking out. Enough to be able to bolt on our electrical connectors. Okay. Okay. Oops. Slow down, Roy. Alright, there we go. About right. Okay. Then we have these second nuts that will go on for clamping the electrical connectors into the ends. Now, as you can see, we have these ends. And those ends will attach themselves or connect to the batteries that we spring loaded. Right next we have these E-tubes and we've got some primer and some glue. So let's go ahead and uh, hit it with a little primer. You don't need much of this stuff. Uh, make sure on the glue that you get a glue that's good for all the kinds of plastic pipe that you're using. Like right now we're using um, conduit. This is gray three quarter inch conduit and I use conduit versus PVC pipe because the walls are thicker and the batteries are a little um, more snug in there. They're not as, they're not as wobbly. So, now that we've got our uh, primer on, we've got some plumber's glue here. Like I said, this glue is good for everything from conduit to PVC. So one end will get the cap, and the other end will get the positive cap. Okay, and if you want, you can wipe that off. One end gets the cap, and one end gets the positive cap. There you go. Two electrical E-tubes. The only thing they need now is the cells inside. So, I will show you how that works.
okay so when you open it up you can see the this is going to be the always the positive end the end with the screw on is going to be your positive end and make sure that your uh, spring and connector is right in the dead center it's important because you want your batteries to connect in the dead center so the batteries will fit down into the e-tubes just like that and you'll put typically uh, six or seven in there however many uh, fits in your e-tube and there you go and then you once you see that they're in there uh, you can press on them you'll see the other end is moving and that's good to know and uh, we'll f that's it go ahead and put batteries in both of these e-tubes yes these are eight cell batteries um, they're first an e-bike and uh, I'm running uh, four, seven cell um, packs on it but on this particular one um, these two I wanted eight cells because it's it's part of my um, combat to keep the 58.8 volt from overcharging okay now the batteries are in here and you just push the cap on and it might take a little pressure because you're fighting the springs I mean there are some good springs in both caps and put them on then you have these e-tubes let's see if this will reach you can clamp one on there one on there and you can see that 32.4 volts in that one e-tube and those those batteries are not charged fully and this one's 32.6 so there you go there's the e-tubes and uh, they're gonna go um, in <clears throat> parallel with some more e-tubes um, to make a 58.8 volt e-bike and I don't want to confuse you with the eight cell packs because all my other packs are seven cells but my charger is a 14s so it's a 58.8 volt charger and I don't like the idea of charging all of my batteries up to 4.2 volts because that actually shortens their life from what I'm understanding if you could uh, bring them up to about four volts um, you'll be doing better so I threw in one extra battery on these two tubes um, to spread out the voltage a little bit and so all of my batteries will my whole pack as an entire pack will charge to 58.8 but um, there'll be a couple extra batteries in there so each individual cell will actually be um, 4.1 volts instead of 4.2 in the end all right, well, thanks, YouTube, and uh, have a great day. Uh, look for my other videos.